Hey guys, uh, Marco here from Aviero Live CS. Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll continue reviewing the Boeing 737-800NG fire protection system. And we'll keep talking about non-normal checklists and abnormals. I really hope you're enjoying this series and let's get started. We're going to start with uh, two very short uh, non-normal checklists for the fire protection system. And the first one is the APU bottle discharge, which uh, you can see here. The condition is the APU fire extinguisher bottle has discharged or pressure is low. And that's the end of the checklist. And now let's talk about APU detection inoperative, this slide here. Condition APU fire detection is inoperative. If the APU is running, you need to put the APU switch off. And there is a caution there saying, do not run the APU. An APU fire would not be detected and the APU would continue to run. And that's the end of the checklist. Now we will review the cargo fire. Uh, this is a little bit longer than the previous ones. And we have the cargo fire in the forward or aft compartment. Remember we saw that before in our previous video. So I invite you to go to the link and review those uh, videos if you haven't done so. So here we have the two lights, uh, forward and aft. And this is what we are going to talk about. The condition is fire is detected in the related cargo compartment. The objective is to suppress the cargo fire. Before we continue with the checklist, we have some information about the cargo fire in the FCTM, the Flight Crew Training Manual, which is always a good reading. And um, I have highlighted here the things I believe they are most important about the cargo fire. So please take a time to pause the video and read through it, and uh, you will find good information here. Now let's see it in flight. Okay, so we are in the air and we are getting the indication and we can hear the bell. We see the fire warning coming on. If you see the panel, we have an indication of a fire on the forward cargo compartment. So now when we have identified the malfunction, we can cancel the bell. So now we'll run the cargo fire non-normal checklist. Again, we can read the condition. The fire is detected in the related cargo compartment. In this case, it's the forward cargo compartment. The objective is to suppress the cargo fire. So cargo fire arm switch affect the compartment. Confirm, push, verify, armed. It's pushed and we can read armed. It's verified. Cargo fire discharge switch push and hold for one second. So we lift the guard, push for one second. Note, this charge light may need up to 30 seconds to illuminate. Note, halon or residual smoke can cause flight deck cargo fire indications to remain or occur again. More information is found in the additional information section. Now, we need to choose one on the ground or in flight. We are in flight, we'll go to step four. In case we are on the ground, there's a warning, inform ground personnel not to open any cargo door until all passengers and crew have exited the airplane and firefighting equipment is nearby. Step four says recycling fan switches both off. So we'll put both of them off. So when we put this uh, recycling fan switches to off, we're doing it to avoid the smoke from the forward cargo hold being drawn into the mix manifold and from there back into the passenger cabin. Pack switches both high. Left one is in high, right is in high. Plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Checklist complete except deferred items. So when we read the deferred items, uh, we'll uh, see the descent checklist. And then we have the pro checklist with the warning we read before about not to open any cargo door before the, all the passengers have exited the airplane. 
Then we have the landing checklist, and the, in the additional information, uh, we have that the red forward and aft cargo fire warning lights can extinguish, remain illuminated, or re-illuminate over the remainder of the flight. If the forward aft cargo fire warning lights re-illuminate, both master fire warning lights also re-illuminate, and the fire warning bell sounds. These flight deck indications alone of a cargo fire within the same compartment do not indicate the fire is uncontrolled. Illumination of the cargo fire discharge light indicates the fire suppression system has been fully activated. So here we can see we have the discharge light and there is no indication of fire on the forward cargo compartment. Now let's continue with uh, some non-normal checklist for the fire protection system the first thing we're going to talk about is the cargo fire detector fault, which is uh, this slide here. Condition fire detection is inoperative in one or both cargo compartments. And that's the end of the checklist. Uh, something to uh, mention here, this light does not trigger the master caution system annunciator. Next, we have the discharge light. It's uh, this one here. Condition, a cargo fire extinguisher bottle has discharge or pressure is low. And that's the end of the checklist. If we check the fault light, this one here, this is the engine fire overheat detector fault. Condition, engine fire and overheat detection is inoperative in one or both engines. And that's the end of the checklist. And then we have the left or right bottle discharge lights, are these two lights. Condition, the engine fire extinguisher bottle has discharge or pressure is low. Okay, that's the end of the video for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please do it now. And don't forget to hit the bell so you will be notified once we upload a new video. As always, guys, if you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will finish the fire protection system review. Until then, guys, take care and hope to see you soon.